our next, our last talk of the weekend is about again. It is the beginner's guide to gowns by one of our lovely customers again, Rose So Cosplay. It's costumes. I will get that right by the end of this week. Rose So is costumes. Something like that. So would you, Rose, would you like to just take it away? Well, hi everyone. I know a few faces in this audience. It's quite strange to see you guys again. But this is going to be a panel about where to start with making ball dresses. If you follow my work or you come to see me, you'll know that I specialise in massive dresses. I specialise in the impractical and the impossible. So, these are some of my costumes. That is Sarah from Labyrinth, which somebody actually asked me about yesterday, which I haven't worn in five years. Um, Princess Merida, Princess Ariel and Rose Quartz, all of which are what I would consider a ball gown style dress because they are all huge and completely impractical. Of course, if you're on the internet, you'll have seen there are literally thousands of designs for dress versions of cosplays at the moment. It's a big thing, you get all kinds of artists doing it, you get fan designs, you get people doing their own designs, like gajinkas particularly things like Pokemon Gajinkas have come home of late, of course, Totoro dresses, and you can have some My Little Pony. So, the biggest question I get when I talk about dresses is usually, where do you start? Where do you begin? What do you do? How do I get this massive dress and this piece of paper uh, onto my body? So, first thing to do is to choose your design. You don't always have to go for the first thing you see. So if you Google, say you're doing a princess dress, if you just Google it, you usually get pictures of the cartoon and then you get pictures of Disney parks. But there's also artist designs, there's also your own design, there's historical designs. It's not the <laughs> I don't think this microphone likes me. There's also, you get onto things like DeviantArt, I know, it's a useless website, but you will sometimes find designs from other people, artists such as Sunset Dragon, who did the crystal gem dresses that are down here, and I don't have a credit for those, but they are very pretty. But if you are going to use an artist's design, and this is really important, drop them a message and ask, just ask them. Most of them will be absolutely lovely with you about it and they'll be thrilled that anybody wants to do their design but always ask. So, once you've picked your design, picked your character, you know what you do. Next step is to break it down. I usually do this in a notebook or on a computer with a Google document and you break it down because it's less scary if you break it into bits, you know what you're doing for each section, for like each stage. So, Start with the basic dress. Just start at the beginning. Start with your dress and then look for your wig and then go in, back into your dress and do your detail work because if anything happens between the basic dress and the wig and you've got those two pieces and you want to wear it for costume, like for convention, it's possible to wear things like without the detail work. I've done it before, I've worn princess dresses as a test without properly finishing all the details on them. But once you get past your basic dress and wig, then into your details and then your accessories, which are actually important to bring things together. So, the first step with a dress is a pattern. Some of you fabulous people I know are able to make your own patterns. I can do it, but I don't like doing it. So, I usually use specialist cosplay patterns. Of late, because of cosplay becoming a thing, Companies like McCall's have started doing specialist patterns that are made for cosplay. So you can buy things from people like Yaya Han, Mango Sirene, but you can also get simplistic costuming patterns. Things like garlic dresses, Zelda, Alice. And it's always worth looking at even into wedding dress sections in pattern books and at historical patterns and fancy dress patterns. It's okay if the pattern you buy isn't in the colour your dress wants to be or isn't exactly right. If it's a similar shape, you can use it as a base to work from. Especially if it's something like a medieval gown, there's always going to be a simple medieval gown pattern. There's always going to be a simple ball dress pattern. I have been known to use patterns for Cinderella to make things for Belle. I've used 
historical patterns to make costumes. I've used all kinds of things for all kinds of things. So the next thing is underneath your dress. So if you're going to be wearing a big, big ball dress, the main thing you want it to do is be big. Which you, without some support underneath it, it usually won't be. So I would recommend getting yourself one of these, which is a hoop skirt. You can buy these on eBay. You can use hula hoops to make them if you're on a budget. You can also use lots and lots of layers of netting sewn up to make, well, I call them poofs. I don't know what they're actually called, but they're poofs. Um, <coughs> and then you need to make sure that you've got something on your legs. So I usually just go through three pound Primark leggings. Nice and simple, nice and cheap. But if you want to be accurate, you can make bloomers, you can do it all beautifully underneath, so when you spin, people don't see the fact you're wearing bright blue leggings. And then, if you're wearing something really heavy, like, for example, my bronzer's bell dress, I have hip padding, which is like two pillows that you put around your waist that are a piece of string. You balance the dress on top of to stop the weight pressing into your hips. It just takes some of that pressure off, because it can leave scars and it can hurt. And then, if you're going to wear a corset underneath your dress, do not wear a corset to dress. If your dress has a built-in corset, don't wear two corsets. I've done it before, you will regret it. Just make sure that you are comfortable underneath every cosplay you're going to be wearing, and make sure that you're covered up. It's very important. So, this is the thing I learned from experience. Before you make anything of your fabric, get the fabric and put it in the washing machine. Because if you're anything like me, and you don't wash the fabric, it's going to shrink, the dye will leak, something weird will happen. Yeah, Sorry, you're, you're nodding your head, you've done this. Please wash your fabric, don't be me. So, I usually start with the skirt. Some people start with the top, it really doesn't matter where you start. I start with skirts. So, choose the right fabric. This is important. You can't make a ball gown out of lining fabric. I have been there. Don't do it, it doesn't work. I usually go for, first of all, curtains, bed sheets, anything where you can get a lot of fabric for quite cheap is a good place to start, especially if you're doing a big ball dress and you need metres and metres and metres and metres of something with a pattern on it, or even metres and metres of plain cottons. This dress I'm wearing was actually a bed sheet once, but I don't tell anyone. Um, <clears throat> next thing I'd say is line your skirt. I know it seems like a waste of fabric to buy twice as much for something no one's ever going to see, but it does help. It is more comfortable, it will make your costume last so much longer. You can get really cheap lining fabric on the eBay for about a pound a yard. Um, I like using circle skirts, so this dress I'm wearing is actually three. It's three layers of circle skirt, even though it needs ironing. But these are good for if you want that sort of swishy 50s rockabilly look. You can make really long circle skirts and make them full length to make ball dresses. You can also make half circles, three quarter circles. Feel free to Google those terms because there are some really good, really easy patterns for those things. You can also, like the big sample here, actually use chewing to make a skirt if you're making something really simple. So these can be really good fun if you just want something simple, you want to go partying, it's a hen party, night out, you want to be a princess on a cheap. I've done it before, it is good fun. And you can also make the bottom of your skirt stick out by using something called horsehair braiding, which you can buy by the meter on eBay. You then sew into the hems of your skirt and it kind of holds it out without you needing to put a hoop underneath it. This stuff is expensive, but it does work if you don't want to deal with all the underskirts. And the next bit is the details on the skirt. Oh. Okay, so they're not actually called butt poofs, but they are now. Do you mean a bustle? I do mean a bustle, but it's been renamed. So, skirt details I like to use are bustles, Side poofs, the things that Cinderella has, I'm sure they have a fancy name, I can't remember it. You can also use shaped ends, so 
If you're making a ball dress, you can go in and cut the hem into shape, and make it into a scalloped edge, make it all kinds of different things to give it just a bit of extra flair. You can also use glittered tools, glittered fabrics, really thin fabrics to put over the top of the dress to just add another layer on which you can put sequins, diamantes, sparkle, all kinds of things without having to go in and put them all onto your main dress. And of course it being me. You can put diamantes on things. Diamantes are great. <laughs> so, then you go onto your top. So, my one of the things that I like to do if I'm making a costume and I want to be comfortable is bodice style. These can give you a corset style look without you actually having to bone them, having to put corseting in them, but they still give you that kind of overall look. And they're often, when you buy a pattern from Simplicity or somewhere like that, it would usually be a bodice style that they'll give you as part of the pattern. And they are a lot easier to make when you're starting. I would recommend if you're going to do this, put shoulders in it, because if you're a woman and you need a bra like me, that's not for really wearing. And these usually come with shoulders so you can actually hide them. Great trick. And of course, there's everyone's favourite thing to make with a ball dress, the corset. So if you're going to make a corset, measure your corset, measure it again, and then three days later, measure it again. I don't know why, but I always do it wrong. So I usually start, for the first few years of making corsets, I always worked with plastic boning. It's much easier to work with than the metal, it's much safer, it's a much better place to start if you're learning what you're doing. And it's also easier to actually snap it and shape it, because once you get to metal, it's such a pain to shape. But if you are using bone, make sure you put something on, on the top and the bottom of the boning, so if anything happens and it starts to push against you, it doesn't dig into you and actually cut you, because that has happened before for me. Um, if you're making corset, always put a modesty panel in. I know some of you have beautiful figures, but always be safe. Just put that little bit of extra fabric in, just, just in case. And then make sure if you are making a corset, and you're eye lacing the back, use eyelids. Don't do what I've done before and sew buttonholes all the way across the back and try and lace that. It doesn't work. I thought it would, it really doesn't. And if you are going to do that, make sure you use either a really strong ribbon or shoelaces or something quite strong to hold the back of it together. Don't use the cheapest ribbon you can buy in a craft shop the day before the con, because it will rip. As I stuck their nose she had to cut me out of something once because I did that. So, once you've got your top together, you can add all the details. This is my favourite thing about cosplay, details. If I could wear cosplay every day in my life, I would. But, there's lots of ways you can add details into a ball dress. My rose quartz dress on here has beading, it has embroidery, it has lots and lots of sequins, of course and it also has fabric flowers and in the original source image the dress is actually plain but because the bottom fits pink I just went and added all the pink from the top and just decorated it all just to add that bit more of character that will make it more me so the next bit is the bit that I'm sure you all love making sleeves these are a really important part of a lot of princess dresses especially things like Disney dresses they love a good big, poofy, pointless sleeves that you could probably store a few things in. So, if you're going to be making sleeves, if you've bought a pattern that doesn't have them in, don't be afraid to Google it. Quite often there'll be brilliant YouTube tutorials. There's usually someone else that has been through the same problem before you. When I made my... Um, oh, what was it? When I made Princess Belle, she has like a fabric top piece, I can't remember the fun's name for, but I ended up YouTubing how to do that because I had absolutely no idea. Followed a tutorial for 2015 Cinderella, but it worked perfectly. So, now you've got your dress, you have a dress, Woo! don't forget to add your wig, any accessories, I like adding flower crowns, tiaras, hair pieces, anything, a little bit extra just to add something more to your hair, just 
that little touch of sparkle, little touch of fun to your outfit. And don't forget your wig. I like looking on places like eBay, Amazon, online sites for wigs. But of course, sometimes you're going to need a stack. I'm going to need a specialist shop such as Arda, Costcraft. They will sell all kinds of things in all kinds of colours if you're looking for that exact colour that makes no sense. And of course, ask other people. I've often been recommended sellers on eBay I would never have thought of by other people, or it was actually a friend that recommended Amazon for wigs. I had no idea they sold them. But they do, and they're quite expensive, but they do exist. So, you've got your wig, you've got your accessories, you've got your dress. Time to put the whole lot on and celebrate. Because hurrah, you've just made your first ball gown. And don't forget to take about a thousand selfies if you meet. Just every angle. But thank you all for listening. If you guys have any more questions or need any more details, feel free to ask me. All this PowerPoint will be up on my Facebook page in the next couple of days if you want to go back through it. But thank you guys for listening. I have a quick question. So making sleeves, is it easier to make the whole sort of, do you have to make the sleeves separate to the dress or can they be made in one whole, in one go? Usually you'll have to make the sleeve pieces separate and then sew them into the dress anyway. I've not worked with many patterns where the sleeves have come as part of the bodice because usually you need to sew the sleeves on so you're able to do this with your arms or if you did that your entire top would just lift up. Jasmine. Yeah. Jasmine. Perfect. Uh, anyone in the audience have any questions at all for those so if not, perfect. Um, thank you so much for your talk, Ru. It's been absolutely amazing and interesting as always. So, um, but I feel very, I feel like speak for yourself. But if you do have any questions, Ru has a table just on the other side of the wall, just at the back there. If you have any questions for him, so uh, ladies and gentlemen, please show your appreciation for the last time. Ru Sloan's costume.